Cities Hydro is a three-year seabed mapping project funded by the European Union and we're responsible for mapping key areas around the Scottish, Irish and Northern Irish coastlines to support navigation safety and the updating of nautical charts and environmental habitat mapping within those regions. The primary benefit of this data set will be the updating of nautical charts and this will help fulfil national requirements for a safety of life at sea. The data will also be used by coastal zone managers for renewable development, aquaculture, aggregates and the leisure industry as well. Well the science of hydrography has actually been around for five to six hundred years and certainly going back to, to the old days they un used to undertake measurements from the side of a ship using a, a lead line, uh, physically a, a bl block of lead on a graduated rope and oftentimes they would have a daub of wax on the plum which would capture the uh, sediment uh, from the seabed so they would be able to add that information onto the charts as well. Fast forward five to six hundred years and we're now undertaking very detailed acoustic measurements by sensors that are fitted to the hulls of survey ships. Our primary tool is a multi-beam echo sounder. Uh, the multi-beam echo sounder has the capacity to emit and receive uh, pings of sound at the same time and the sound is emitted in an arc or a swathe beneath the ship and the echoes listen for. Uh, when these data come back, uh, they're processed on board the ship using information that we know about the speed of sound in water and from this the time it has taken the echo to return is worked out and therefore we can work out the depth at that location. And the location is very accurate because we use GPS to position. We can also use the character of the echo to assess the character of the seabed. Uh, so a strong echo would often indicate a uh, harder seabed and we can use this information in conjunction with ground truthing to uh, work out what the nature of the seabed is in that area. Shelly Sands, you can see the shells in there? Yeah. Here we have a, a paper chart. So this is, this is how the uh, original surveys would have been conducted and one of the sort of products from the original surveys. So this paper chart ultimately will be replaced with digital products, three-dimensional fly-throughs, digital imagery to enable safety at sea and better navigation. for the Geological Survey of Ireland in Dublin and together with the Marine Institute in Galway we work on a program called Infomar which is mapping the seabed around Ireland. In 2011 we also became involved with the Inish Hydro project. We, we were given the task then to survey Dundalk Bay which is on the border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland where FB was working and they've uh, brought their data down to meet up with where we finished up our data. So it's, it's a nice um, blend of, of two different countries working together and integrating their data. One of the areas we've been working on is Carlingford Lock, which lies in the boundary of nor the north and south of Ireland. For us it's really important because it supports up to 5,000 tonnes of shellfish production and these beds per annum. It's also important because it has a number of international and national designations for conservation. The Innes project is providing us with an important base layer to allow us to spatially manage the allocation of these resources between the variety of users. I'm a hydrographic surveyor at SAMS. We're sat here in Open Bay on the Northern Lighthouse Vessel Polestar, getting ready to go out and complete multi beam survey operations. We're going to be using this system to map in and around the Firth of Lawn. There's lots of interesting features around the Firth of Lawn, such as the Corrie of Reckon, which is the world's third largest whirlpool. It's caused by uh, strong currents racing between uh, Scarba and Jura. Uh, this funneling of the currents creates a constriction, and with the 
Really interesting seabed topography with large cliffs and steep drop-offs creates this whirlpool effect. So the second stage, after we've acquired all of our multi-beam data, is to process it. This involves removing all the, the what we call noise from the data set so that we have a final, clean, clear image of the seabed. As a good rule of thumb, it's about one day of collection to one day of processing. So we collected about 95 days worth of data, so uh, we're expecting to be around the same time processing to deliver a, a very professional finished product. Dundalk Bay would, would have been originally um, surveyed back in the 1800s. It hasn't been surveyed since then and that's why it's been targeted for attention by the Inish Hydro project. Dundalk Bay is, a, is quite a, a wide expanse of water and it drops off to about 30 metres on the outside but it goes right into two metres that we were surveying into on, on the, the near shore side. What we've come up with now is a really good 100% um, coverage of the seabed in Dundalk. There's a, quite a significant fault that runs through the bay from east to west which has been backfilled with uh, sediment and it's very useful for the port authorities then to, to understand that that channel exists there and they don't really have to redredge a new channel out to sea. They can only maintain the, the river section of the port. If you look at the old 2D paper chart, that channel didn't show up at all. But we were very interested in doing this survey. This is, a, as I said, a large area, 553 square kilometres. Geologically, very, very interesting, very diverse. So we had deep water areas, 260 metres water depth, right into shallow water. I think our smallest depth was half a metre. We surveyed uh, 20 wreck sites, 13 of which uh, we found to be new, uh, and new for, the, for this survey. From World War II flying boats, to um, uh, cargo ships that were lost in a, in a violent storm off the Isle of Belnahur in 1937. We've had a tremendous experience with the Innis Hydro project. Um, we've been drawing on a lot of experience and a lot of skills from Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland and England, led by the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. For the first time, not only are we undertaking a seabed mapping project that's focusing on producing maps of the seabed, but a number of organisations are working together across government to map the seabed to a set standard that allows data collection to support all of our uses. It's the exposure to uh, working in different jurisdictions with different government bodies in different countries. And there's a real sense that this is a tangible uh, benefit of being involved in Inish Hydro, this international cross-border cooperation. The data will be provided for free on the website and the real value of this is the fact that what people do with the data when they receive it. There's developments that we haven't even thought of yet that are going to happen with these data sets. And that's down to the data being available for free. Hopefully that this will wrap up the, the project and we look forward now to possibly going into an Inish Hydro 2 project, which will do some more work up in between Scotland and Ireland.